Today I will be making an apothecary for my Empress Spears army. Now in the Empress Spears, the chapter specialists are called Druids, likely a nod to their tribal origins, and as of such I intend to lean into this tribal aspect with my conversion. To begin with, I actually started on the weapon. The Primaris Apothecary carries a fancy bolt pistol. To represent this, I'm going to use a grapnel launcher thing from the Reavers kit. First up, I snipped it off the sprue before removing the fired hook and rope at the barrel end with my clippers, and then cleaned it up with a knife. At this point, you could also remove the knobbly bit under the barrel, as that area is going to want to be flat later. However, I forgot at this stage, so I did it later. For the tip of the barrel, the Games Workshop model has a fancy barrel, as it is a fancy pistol. So I'm going to use the barrel tip from a spare Necron weapon I had previously cannibalised. Another option to use here could be the end of the missile we'll be needing for a later step. Using my knife, I trimmed off the required part from the gun and then went to work on removing the spike that came with it. At this point however, I did not wish to glue anything together as I still had a little cutting to do on the weapon itself and sticking the barrel on early might result in it getting knocked off. A rather obvious feature on the apothecary's weapon is the vials of liquid on the bottom. And to make these I'm going to take a pair of grenades from the Reaver Sprue. Whilst these could be added to the bottom as with a Games Workshop Apothecary model, I decided that adding them to the side of the weapon might work a little better for my purposes as the grenades I'm using are flattened slightly to one side. So, taking my knife, I trimmed down the round section on the right side of the grapnel launcher, retaining about a third of it at the bottom. Taking time and cutting small layers helps to ensure that you do not slip and cut something you don't want to, including yourself. Once done and cleaned up, the grenades can now be attached to the side to give that liquid vial look, and the barrel tip from earlier can now also be added. Below the barrel, the apothecary's weapon has a pointy bit. I'm assuming a syringe for those vials we added earlier. And for this there are a couple of options. The Escher Gang has a few poison injector thingies on their models, notably the gang leader's bolt gun in the standard gang kit, but I could not find that part for love nor money when I came to making this video, so I'm using the other option, which is from the missile launcher ammo pack thing from a standard Space Marine tactical squad, or Devastator squad even. With this option, the part we need is the tip of the middle missile. This can be removed with a knife, being very careful to stop the bit that you want from flying off into the carpet, never to be seen again. With that removed, it's just a case of cleaning it up and adding it to the weapon under the barrel. I found it helpful to have a tool to aid in the positioning of this part, though tweezers are likely easier to use than a knife, which is what I did. With the weapon done, I moved on to the body, and the base model I'm going to use is the Master of Possessions, from the Start Collecting Chaos Space Marines. This model has a nice cloak, fur, feathers, bones, scrolls, and all manner of things that give it quite a tribal vibe. So, as always, I removed and cleaned up the parts to make the body, leaving the backpack, hands and weapons from this kit on the sprue for another day, as they are far too chaosy for the model I'm looking to make. The body itself has a few chaos specific things on it, notably the 8 point star belt, the extra pointy armour trim on the leg, and the goat horned head. For this model to become a loyalist apothecary, these aspects would have to be removed. The head, being the largest and probably least loyalist part of this model, I decided to start on that. Taking my clippers, I began to make some small cuts around the horns, trying not to damage either part, as his head looks far too useful for a future project. After a couple of initial cuts, I moved to a knife as the neck area is a little more fiddly, though if I were not saving the head, this would be a lot easier to cut off with the clippers. Once the head has been taken off, the neck area will need a little extra attention, as it will be flat. Using my knife, I remove the excess plastic slowly to reinstate the indented socket for a regular Space Marine head to be attached when the time comes. With his primary weapon being drawn, the holster bolt pistol his belt seemed quite redundant. So, taking my saw, it could be removed and the area cleaned up. The beauty of this area on the model 
is that some mistakes can be hidden with pouches, grenades and purity seals later on once everything else is together. But do this slowly, making regular checks because small errors can be hidden, half a leg missing is a little bit more difficult. The Chaos Star at the belt buckle would prove a little more awkward. If you're not too worried about it, you could probably leave it to stick some various adornments over parts of the area, possibly a purity seal right in the middle. But I wanted to try and remove it entirely, as I have a grenade belt from a Reaver kit that would cover most of the area left by its removal, but it wouldn't go over the top of it very well. So, taking my knife to it, I could slowly trim away the buckle until it was a lot flatter. Make the area final clean again with the knife before gluing said grenade belt in place. With the grenades in place, the waist is looking a lot better, but it still has a bit of space that could be filled in. To do this, I grabbed a single pouch. In this case, I trimmed it for next to a holstered pistol with the old knife though you could use any pouches you have lying around. And with that done, the body can be glued together. Now the right leg has some not particularly loyalist pointy trim around the edges of it. Very ornate, this would not fit in with the more traditional Space Marine armor style, nor does it look particularly tribal, and so will need to be adjusted. With a knife or file, the protruding triangular bits can be carefully trimmed down and smoothed out. At this point, Again, any small errors do not matter too much, as this can be covered up. Purity shields are your friend here. And once this is done, the leg can be attached in place with some plastic glue. With the leg attached, we can now move on to the arms. The left arm half can be glued into place, as it doesn't really need much done to it yet. And for the other half of it, I plan on creating my own helix gauntlet thing, whatever the apothecaries have. The arm I'm using is from the Reavers kit I have lying around, one that's reloading a bolt gun. Taking my knife, I trim off the magazine with the fingers attached before taking the clippers and knife to it to remove as much of that magazine as possible. If you had any old tactical squad arms, you could easily enough just switch out the hands for the open one that holds the gun, but keeping the reaver on as it's much closer to the right scale. After frankly quite a lot of very, very awkward cutting, and an empty hand, I decided that I would fill it up with a bottle or a vial of liquid. Perhaps a sample he's trying to analyse, or maybe he's just had a rough day and needs to pick me up. Either way, I took one of the single missiles from my biz box and trimmed either end down so it was a little more bottle shaped. Now you could use one of the missiles left from earlier, if you still have it. And once this was trimmed down, I used my drill just to indent the top a bit to represent a bottle. Before gluing any of this together, I put it aside for a moment. I needed to trim the arms on the body to flatten out the joint areas as they are designed to fit specific parts. This is done simply with a knife or file and smoothed out ready to accept the arm parts that we actually want to use. With the body prepped, it's time to cut those arms down to size. Measuring against the body, I established that the arms needed to come off just before the elbow joint. So with my saw, I did just that. Now the cutting is done, I could glue the hand together. Doing this before attaching the arm would give me a little more maneuverability. So it's in with the glue, and on with those fingers and the bottle. The right arm will need similar treatment, with the arm coming off just before the elbow, and again, the saw made short work of this cut and a quick clean with my knife before bringing in the glue allowed for a nice join for both arms. Pinning here is also an option, but as the surfaces are quite large, the plastic glue has a decent surface area to work with and will be far less likely to fall off if the model takes a tumble. Now for that fancy gauntlet computer thingy that the apothecaries have. Taking a piece from the Eshigan kit that looks like some kind of reliquary attached to a large pile of sorts, I assume it's meant to contain poison on the Eshigan, I glued it in place with the flat end towards the marine's hand and the pipe towards the elbow. This would give a good base for attaching the screen, 
which comes from the Necromunda Delac kit. On a side note, all the Necromunda kits have a fantastic array of weapons and bits for conversions on them. Really a good kit. With our screen chosen, we can cut off the little tab at the bottom before adding some glue and attaching it to the top of the Marine's arm. If you position the previous bit right, there should be a little gap that it can slot right into and look like it was meant to be there all along. Or at least it will once it has all been patched up. Now it's time to hide some of the mistakes that we might have made earlier on. I have here some purity seals from the Reavers kit, which I'm going to stick around. I have elected for two on the leg and one on his waist, as those were areas which could benefit from having something to catch the eye and hide some cutting mistakes. Once the mistakes have been hidden, our apothecary would then need a backpack. Now, with the backpack, I wanted something a bit different to the standard pack, and without having an apothecary specific one lying around, I would have to create something of my own. Taking one of the many tactical marine backpacks I have, I trimmed down the back area to make it nice and flat, and in my Bix box, I have an ammo box here from an assault cannon that I thought with some slight adjustment could be made into a vaguely convincing medipack. This ammo box only really needed a bit of a trim to the back to flatten it out before it could be glued into place on the backpack. But in order to attach the backpack to the marine, I then would need to clip off the tab on his back where the standard pack would go. This however was a simple case of just the clippers and then the pack could be attached to the marine with relative ease but I'm not quite finished with this pack just yet. On its own, it looks awfully like he's carrying some ammo for a friend, so I decided to get a little more creative. Taking one of the flamer weapons from the Escher kit, I decided that this pipe here would work quite well for connecting the medipack with his weapon. So, after measuring it out and deciding that it could work, I snipped it off before giving it a gentle bend to better fit my needs, as it's not quite at the right angle. Connecting it to the gun would be simple. It fitted quite nicely beneath the bars we added, as if I had planned this all along. But to attach it backpack side, I felt it could use something a little else. Handily, the Delac kit also had some breathing apparatus parts, which have like a pipe coming off of them. So, taking one of those set parts, I snipped the pipe a little shorter, trimmed the side of it with my clippers, so it had a flat surface to attach to our little ammo pack backpack thing. Once glued in place, the pipe could then be attached between the gun and the backpack as if it had always been meant to be there. With that all in place, the final part to this guy would be his head. The one I'm using is from the Infiltrator's kit. The extra sensors of Bisley I thought worked really well, as I did not have the backpack light and the sensors that the apothecary models tend to have on them, maybe this guy had it on his helmet instead. So, with a touch of glue, the head is on and our apothecary is pretty much done. After adding a base, some sand and coffee grounds, this guy is ready for some paint. Now, the Emperor Spear Specialists are noted as having black armour with white helmets, so that's what I went for. Perhaps if his pauldrons were visible, I could probably have done them in white to represent the apothecary specialisation, but they do have this lovely fur and feather thing going on, so I don't mind too much. I also went with white for the medipack, and gave the cloak the faintest of blue washes. You can barely notice it. So after all the paint and everything, this one is done. Big thanks for watching. This one was a little bit longer than usual as there were quite a few fiddly bits in there. Mostly the pan for the bottle. If you enjoyed the video, please consider a like and a subscribe and maybe I'll see you next time. Have a good one all.